Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to continue with our Salesforce industry series, that is the velocity series. So we'll see how we can call an Apex class from an integration procedure. So let's start. Uh, so firstly, let's start with the basics. So integration procedure is part of the Omni Studio. So Omni Studio, uh, if I talk about the la latest release, uh, orgs uh, install the Omni Studio package and there they have the Omni Studio elements like Omni scripts, uh, flex cards, integration procedures, and uh, data raptors. So integration pro procedures are part of the service management layer. That is, uh, the date they are they are uh, low code solutions where uh, where we can use to fetch data from external systems or uh, from Salesforce using using the data raptors and then show that data, manipulate that JSON, and return back to the flex flex card or uh, the Omni script. So uh, within within the integration procedure, we have different actions, and one of the action is remote action. So a remote action in IP calls the specified Apex class and method, or the specified invocable action. Uh, we can pass in the invocable options and data uh, in the input uh, to the Apex class. Uh, the Apex class uh, here must implement the callable interface uh, to be invocable from the integration procedure. So velocity apex classes and remote actions of Omni scripts and integration procedures support the callable interface, uh, the interface which the apex class needs to implement uh, beginnings uh, the summer 21 release with the Omni Studio package. So previously uh, callable interface apex classes were not supported uh, because uh, the Omni Studio package didn't support that and uh, earlier classes were using the velocity open interface and the velocity open interface 2. Uh, to enable uh, make the class available for the IP to be called. So although these interfaces enable flexible implementations when, with uniform sig signature, they reside in the velocity managed package and aren't truly Salesforce standards. So uh, if you have seen my Salesforce industries introduction, the previous video, so I've told you that there were two different packages. So after the Salesforce acquisition of Velocity, Salesforce came up with the Omni Studio package and Salesforce uh, bifurcated the Omni Studio components in that Omni Studio package. So this is what they're trying to say that uh, earlier, this uh, in these interfaces used to be, used to reside in the Velocity managed package and they aren't truly Salesforce standards. So now let's see a demo. So uh, an IP will update an account record and then that updation will trigger a remote action call and using that we'll send an email. The Apex class uh, which we have created is Im uh, will implement the callable interface and uh, so that it will be invoked from the IP. So let's go to my org now. I'll go back to my org. Uh, so this, this is the IP which we are going to see. So uh, we, are, we have created a data raptor post action and we are sending in the account details. Uh, I'll show you uh, which details we are sending. So we are sending the ID, name, website and the phone to the data raptor. Uh, data raptor is used to update uh, since this is a post action. So this will update a record and uh, uh, after updating, we are calling, we, are, uh, we have put it in this remote action here. So uh, we can, uh, if you want to create a new one, you can uh, drag and drop this remote action here in the structure and it will open uh, this tile, uh, will open this kind of a screen. And here you can see I have uh, put in this class, remote class and a remote method. So the remote class is the class called from IP and the remote method is send email. And I'm providing these additional inputs uh, for the Apex class. And I want this uh, remote action to only run when uh, the if uh, we don't have if we don't see an error in the integration procedure. That is a dr save account details uh, slash error is not equal to true. So if there is no error here, then just run this uh, remote action. And then we have a response action uh, where we are just sending in the response. So let's see the Apex class once. So a class which implements a callable interface will have to implement the call method and uh, uh, it will have two arguments. Uh, one is the action that is the method name and second is the ARGS argument map. So you can see we are uh, bifurcating the input output and the options from uh, this ARGS and then we are calling in this uh, remote invoke method 
and in this invoke method i'm checking whether the method name is send email this method name we uh, passed it here uh, from the remote action tile we have passed in this method name send email so i'm just checking whether uh, the method name is send email if yes then just uh, call our logic to send an email so this is how you send an email using apex i i'm uh, providing in the email address from the ip and the email subject and the email body and then uh, i'm putting the output in the output map so this result we can access in the ip so whatever we put in the output map we can get that in the ip so i'll show you once i run the integration procedure so yeah that's all from this class i'll go to the integration procedure i'll click on preview so this is the response let me just uh, change it change the name so i have changed changed uh, test i'll name it change test and this is the website this is the phone number so uh, it's saying that uh, the there was no error and the update is successful upsert success is true and an email must be triggered so if i go to the email so you can see that this email has been triggered and we have a subject that account updated successfully change test the name of the account so uh, so this means that our ip is running as expected so this is how you can call an apex class from an ip so instead of using the old interfaces velocity interfaces you can use the new callable interface now so uh, that's all for today's video and do subscribe the channel for more such videos in the future thanks everyone for